You ever heard the story of Pandora's box? Pandora's sitting up in a room. She gets this gift. And uh, she's told, don't open it. Yeah, like she's not going to open it, right? It's like the Adam and Eve story all over again. Don't eat that. Of course you're going to do it, right? What's in the box? It's a mystery. Saying something's a mystery and don't look at the mystery is the surest way to get somebody to look at the mystery, right? We love a mystery. We want to know what's in the box. We want to know. Do you remember? Do you remember? You remember when you were a kid buying cereal for whatever was inside of it? You didn't want the cereal. It was just garbage anyway. It's just all sugar and carbs. Like, but you wanted that toy or whatever it was. Or like Cracker Jacks. I mean, Cracker Jacks are pretty good. But, um, and I guess that means because the prizes inside were not very good. You'd like go through a whole box of Cracker Jacks and you get a sticker. What is that? Come on. But you would buy, but you would buy, you would buy the Cracker Jacks to get the prize. That's what you wanted. That's what you wanted. So, so you would you'd go through this whole ordeal of digging through a thing just to find out what was inside of it because you didn't know. It was a mystery. This little Pandora, you know, is given basically a box of Cracker Jacks. She's told there's something in there and not to open it. You know, and so she she opens it. And like everything bad gets let out in the world, you know, despair and evil and temptations of every kind and ugliness and hatred and just everything you can think of. And it's just all rushing out. And so Pandora at the time realized, oh, man, I really shouldn't open that. Just like Adam and Eve, you know, sometimes until you do something, you don't know why you shouldn't have done it, even if somebody told you not to. Right. That's the reality of our world. That's growing up, right? Isn't that growing up? Growing up, your parents tell you, don't do that. It's not good for you. And then you're like, why is that not good for you? And then you do it and you're like, oh, that's why. Yeah. The way I feel right now, that's why. Or what this did to my relationships, that's why. Right? Because sometimes just somebody telling you something is not good enough, right? So Pandora, come on the box. Boom. And one thing is left inside. Right? Now there's a mystery inside. One thing left inside. Everything else in the world, all the badness was let out. One thing trapped in the box. The Apostle Paul says that uh, there is a great mystery that was before the beginning of time. That God had this great mystery. It says, it says in the scripture we just read, the mystery of his will. Okay? God has revealed to us the mystery of his will in Jesus Christ. Okay? What's amazing, what's amazing about this passage, all right, is you could skip it because it's complicated. But God, but Paul here in Ephesians chapter 1 lays out God's whole plan in a nutshell. He puts it in a nice package, in a nice box. And he says, this is the mystery of God's will. Do you want to know what the mystery of God's will is? Because we're all kind of sitting around going, what are you doing, God? You ever thought about that? What are you doing here? Why are we here? What are we doing? Why did you make us? And then why did you put this tree there and say, don't eat it? That doesn't seem very smart. Why would you do that? Like, what are we doing here? Why do you make us go through this stuff? It's hard. Life is not fun. Why are we doing this? But he's remained revealed to us, open the box, the mystery of his will. And the mystery of his will in Jesus Christ is that when we dig through all the Cracker Jacks and we get through all the cereal that is the Bible, the bottom line is, is that God is gathering all people into him. God is gathering all people into him. Because like I said, now we can wonder why. I don't know. God wants a big family. God's a family man. I don't know. God wants a big family that you are all a part of. Maybe it's because God created us out of the, the want to love the need to love, 
And so when we fall away, when God's creation rebels, God wants us back, right? And the mystery revealed in Jesus Christ that Paul says here is that God is gathering all people into himself, this massive big family. That's what God wants. What's the purpose of all of this stuff? Of all this, it's to gather us all together. Okay? That's what God wants. God wants us back. Okay? As a part of God's family, just like it was ordained from creation. We were ordained from the foundations of the world, right? He poured out his blessing because when the world was created, the very first thing God goes, hey, you guys are in charge. Why don't you take care of this? And I want, it's going to be good. And then it's not good, right? God's like, I want you back. I want you as a part of my family. Come back. Right? Like they played earlier, uh, oh, sinner, come home, right? Oh, sinner, come home. That's the mystery of God's will. That's, that's the prize in the Cracker Jack box of the Bible. Is we are becoming one large family. We are becoming, we are becoming a group of we are becoming a group of, of people who love and are loved. We're becoming a people who proclaim to God or proclaim to the world God's infinite mercy and grace. And so you have a seal inside of you that is the Holy Spirit that marks you as one of those people. That's what Paul says. We're talking about this sermon series of what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is a seal that you know the mystery. That the mystery has been revealed to you. That God is gathering all things together in love, peace, and hope. Because... You know, in many ways, we are Pandora's box. Think about it. What are you carrying around in there? What are you carrying around inside of yourself? I bet you're carrying around things that you think if anybody ever knew what I was thinking inside, they'd hate me forever, right? If they only knew. And God have, have mercy if this ever opens up and all this stuff gets out. Into, into the world, right? John Paul Sartre said that hell was other people. And why is hell other people? It's because you got all this stuff inside of you and they're watching you. That's what he says. Hell is other people because of that. You don't want to open the box. God forbid this box gets open. We all got a mystery inside of us. All this stuff we're not letting people know about. All this stuff that we're keeping down in there. And we don't want that open. But the real beauty of that message is that inside of you also is the seal that you are one who understands this mystery of God's mercy and grace. And that for some reason, despite all that stuff you're carrying around in you, despite this Pandora's box that you are, God wants you anyway? That's heavy. God wants you as one of these people. And so, yeah, you got stuff knocking around, but guess what you also got in there? The seal of God's Holy Spirit. That's the real prize in the Cracker Jack box that is you. Is the, is the prize of God's Holy Spirit. Because at the end of the Pandora's box story, you know what gets stuck in there? Hope. Everything else gets out if you clamp it down. And you know what gets stuck in there is hope. That's the last thing that she doesn't let out. Because that's the thing you need the most. And yeah, you got a lot of stuff knocking around in there. But you know what you also got in there? Hope. God's seal. That you are loved by God. As a part of this massive family. That God wants you. Despite all that stuff. That God has called you into this family, despite all that stuff. God is calling us to share that hope. God is calling us to share that love, because that's what binds us together in this family. I think a lot about 
the treasure that we have inside of ourselves and what we're carrying around that nobody you know, ever sees. And if you think about how much God loves us and that they call this church the body of Christ. Have you ever thought about, you know, the church is the body of Christ? Think about how many treasures are hidden within the body of Christ. And so in a way, how God lives in us, we live in God because we are living in the body of Christ. You are sitting right now in the body of Christ. Think about that. And so what mysteries and treasures are here in the body of Christ? What seals have been revealed? Think about the people, all the people that, we, that have sat here in this place before you, carrying around what they've carried around, that were sealed. And now you sit here today, this great family that's been gathered together in love, and now is gathered in love across time and space. When we were cleaning out the church, when the Phoebe ladies were cleaning out the church, they found this right here. This is one of the treasures that was, that was hiding inside of the church. It's the top of a communion lid. And it's like, I think it's made out of brass or something like this, but it's all dented up like a lot of us are as the years go on, right? It's all, it's all dented up and, and a little scratch. But it says, in memory of James C. Becker given by Mrs. John Becker, Janet Becker, James C. Becker II, and Ava Becker. And when I saw this, those names may not mean much to you, to some of you, but if you've been in this church for some time, you know that James C. Becker was a helicopter pilot in the Vietnam War. He grew up in this church, was baptized in this church, I don't know if it was that baptistry because I don't know if it was, uh, let's just say it was that baptistry. It's a better story. Okay, so, <laughs> so, uh, so he was baptized in this church, maybe even in, in that baptistry, and he wanted, to be, he wanted to be a pastor. That's what he wanted. But Vietnam came, and, and he had to go, and so he chose to be, uh, he was going to be a chaplain's assistant. Because that's because he wanted to be a pastor. But they said, we don't really need any more chaplain's assistance. What we need is helicopter pilots. And he chose to be a helicopter pilot. And he flew one too many missions. He wasn't supposed to be on duty that day. He wasn't supposed to be on duty that day. But he went out on an additional mission because some guys needed rescuing. And he didn't come back. His helicopter was shut down. And they never found him. They never found his body. But his mother, Elda, used to sit right there and listen to the sermons. And communion was always a special time for her. She told me that once about how much that meant to her. And she would, she would sit up there and she, had, she would always have this look on her face. And I didn't know, maybe this, the top of the communion lid, was one of the reasons why communion was important to her because it was a time that she remembered James because they had had this communion lid that went on top of the communion tray. Think about all the stuff that Miss Elda Becker, who she never talked about, she didn't talk about herself in terms of like what she felt. She talked about herself in terms of like back on the farm in the 30s, and she's no longer with us either. She just recently passed. But she... James was a treasure that came from the body of Christ. Sealed, and we know more about the love of God because of his sacrifice and because of what he did. But Elda was a treasure in the body of Christ. Sealed, one of those people who would sit there and regale us with stories of the 1930s growing up on the farm. Learned a lot about what it was like to grow up in the Depression and the Dust Bowl from Miss Elda Becker. And she always had a smile on her face despite carrying around the fact that every year, and she would tell me about this, she, we, we would have a conversation the day she got the letter, every year, the POW MIA people would mail in and say, we still haven't found your son's body. We found this. Think about that, carrying that around in you. She was carrying that around all those years. Sitting in that pew, looking at that. Gathering every Sunday. Gathering every Sunday to remember Jesus that binds us all together. And you know what? If, you, if She knew 
that she was loved and that despite all the stuff that's been let out in the world and despite losing her son and carrying around that pain, guess what was also inside of her? Hope. She was sealed with Jesus Christ, set in this church every Sunday. And we gather around this table every Sunday. We gather in this church to remind ourselves of that. That yeah, there's pain and struggles and life is hard and there's a lot of stuff we're carrying around, but we're a part of this large, huge thing. Can you feel the weight of them? Can you feel the weight of those who have come before us, pressing down on us, pressing us forward? Can you feel the strength of the body of Christ across time and space, pushing us forward to greater things? Can you feel the strength of the love of everyone who has been loved in the name of Christ since, the uni- since Christ began this thing 2,000 years ago? Not just in this church, but in every church that's ever been, in every church that will ever be. Because Paul's letter to the Ephesians is about who the people of Christ are. Who God's people are. And, Paul, and what Christ is asking you to do is not an easy thing. Loving everybody, becoming... It's hard to get along, and it's hard to love people. But what Paul was reminding the Ephesians there is you are sealed with this because you are a part of this massive, massive event that began in Jesus Christ. And we are gathered among this people, and there is a weight to it, like a giant wave. And the longer that wave goes on, and the more people that have been in that wave, it propels us forward. It gives us strength. All of you marked by the Holy Spirit. All of those people who have been. And there will be people after us. That's a mighty wave that we are riding. That's a mighty treasure hidden inside of us. I'm sure we may be a little dinged up and bent up because of it like this plate treasure nonetheless. That's why we gather around this table every Sunday. To remind us of that. That's why we baptize Ross. To remind us of that. You are part of something big. We are a part of something amazing that God is doing in gathering all peoples to himself. Just as Christ was broken, as we are broken sometimes, he gathers all of us to himself, even in his brokenness, every Sunday. We remember that we do have a mystery inside, but it may not be the mystery we're worried about. The mystery inside of us is what makes that seals us as this, a part of this great people of God. It gives us strength to move forward when we don't think we can or when we think the task is impossible. We're a part of a great wave. You ever heard the story of Pandora's box? Pandora's sitting up in a room. She gets this gift. And uh, she's told, don't open it. Yeah, like she's not going to open it, right? It's like the Adam and Eve story all over again. Don't eat that. Of course you're going to do it, right? What's in the box? It's a mystery. Saying something's a mystery and don't look at the mystery is the surest way to get somebody to look at the mystery, right? We love a mystery. We want to know what's in the box. We want to know. Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember when you were a kid buying cereal for whatever was inside of it? You didn't want the cereal. It was just garbage anyway. It's just all sugar and carbs. Like, but you wanted that toy or whatever it was. Or like Cracker Jacks. I mean, Cracker Jacks are pretty good. but um, And I guess that means because the prizes inside were not very good. You'd like go through a whole box of Cracker Jacks and you get a sticker. What is that? Come on. But you would buy, but you would buy, you would buy the Cracker Jacks to get the prize. That's what you wanted. That's what you wanted. So you would you'd go through this whole ordeal of digging through a thing just to find out what was inside of it. Because you didn't know. It was a mystery. This little Pandora, you know, is given basically a box of Cracker Jacks. She's told there's something in there and not to open it. 
You know, and so she she opens it, and like everything bad gets let out in the world. You know, despair and evil and temptations of every kind and ugliness and hatred and just everything you can think of. And it's just all rushing out. And so Pandora at the time realized, oh man, I really shouldn't have opened that. Just like Adam and Eve, you know, sometimes until you do something, you don't know why you shouldn't have done it, even if somebody told you not to, right? That's the reality of our world. That's growing up, right? Isn't that growing up? Growing up, your parents tell you, don't do that. It's not good for you. And then you're like, why is that not good for you? And then you do it and you're like, oh, that's why. Yeah. The way I feel right now, that's why. Or what this did to my relationships, that's why. Right? Because sometimes just somebody telling you something is not good enough, right? So Pandora comes down on the box. Boom! And one thing is left inside. Right? Now there's a mystery inside. One thing left inside. Everything else in the world, all the badness was let out. One thing trapped in the box. The Apostle Paul says that uh, there is a great mystery that was before the beginning of time, that God had this great mystery. It says, it says in the scripture we just read, the mystery of his will. Okay, God has revealed to us the mystery of his will in Jesus Christ. Okay, what's amazing, what's amazing about this passage, all right, is you could skip it because it's complicated. But God, but Paul here in Ephesians chapter one lays out God's whole plan in a nutshell. He puts it in a nice package, in a nice box, and he says, this is the mystery of God's will. Do you want to know what the mystery of God's will is, because we're all kind of sitting around going, what are you doing, God? You ever thought about that? What are you doing here? Why are we here? What are we doing? Why did you make us? And then why did you put this tree there and say, don't eat it? That doesn't seem very smart. Why did you do that? 